Okay, uh, thank you for attending. Uh, my name is Yosuke Yamashiki. I put the race boundary because I was uh, grown up in Brazil and I was studied in the University of Sao Paulo too. But uh, I actually, I'm Japanese. Uh, I want to become a Brazilian, but <laughs> only the name. Okay, so uh, let me just introduce what I, I, I will talk uh, because the, the the last presentation was excellent, and I, I, I think uh, I, I, I was thinking to skip this because uh, he, they introduced everything that I, I, I wanted to talk. But I like to repeat that because all, all of the disaster, the different types of the disaster are very, very important, are very, very typical, and uh, it is difficult to discuss in integration manner. So. So our session uh, mainly address uh, the future disaster. So if you think the future disaster, you have to increase the resilience, and to do that, you have to prepare. You have to make preparedness and reduce the vulnerability. And to that, to do that, you have to make a prediction and a lot. However, how we can cope with the low probability and high impact disaster? to be discussed in our future session. And a uh, different session I will talk in the later, I'm sorry. But uh, this is the main fundamental question because you know that the human is suffered and we have to f uh, think about the real existence issues. And uh, I would like to focus first of all about the space disaster and the historical disaster and then the earth disaster and uh, make, trying to make the comparative uh, s sketch for each occurrence. So, so if you think about the space disaster, there is, a, I, I would say three, this asteroid, comet attack, and solar flare, and uh, the final one is the gamma ray burst. It, it, this is just a uh, very, very <laughs> rare event, and no one really think about in the serious way, but there are one scientist who is actually thinking about this might be happening, but uh, the, the, the type of the disaster, the solar flare and the GLB is very, very similar. And the first one is very similar to the volcanic eruption. This is an illustration of the human history. And uh, we have 4.5 uh, billion years of the, our Earth history. But most of the Earth history was a repeating disaster, but after the Permian, after, for example, the, the Paleozoic period, we have uh, between the Paleozoic and Mesozoic, we have a Permian disaster, which killed almost all living. And then uh, we have the end of the Permian period and the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic period, there is a big uh, disaster induced by the asteroid, which co we call it a KT or KPG uh, PG disaster. And these are uh, space-based disaster. So this is commonly understood. It's a big five disaster. It's uh, in the historical manner. We have a uh, uh, Cretaceous Paleogen, uh, the KT extinction event. Uh, this is what I, I was talking. And also the Triassic, Jurassic, TRJ extinction event, and Permian Triassic event and also late demonian event and Ordovician Silurian extinction event. And these are classified mainly asteroid attack and volcanic eruption and climate change. And uh, these are the, uh, the common understanding. However, there is no fundamental proof except the one, the KPG. KPG, the KT, this was the evidence proved by the scientists there is a iridium in the KT boundary layer. But other disasters are not understood very correctly. So this is a KT or KPG asteroid impact. It was hypothesized by the, the hit by the asteroid with a 15 kilometers of diameter and killing almost 70% of the species. There is another uh, discussion that the massive uh, uh, volcanic eruption in the, occurred in the, the end of the Permian period, killed 90% of the all living species. And they, that disaster induced several things, the global warming, and the end, there is the ocean, great ocean anoxia event. However, 
this is also one scientist is saying that PTR or Permian disaster also might be asteroid attack. Of course, this is not the very accepted event. However, they find the uh, helium and uh, argon, which is rare in the Earth, but it's rich in the asteroid uh, in the layer. So they are saying that all mass ex uh, extinction event might be associated by the asteroid attack. Of course, there is no proof yet, uh, but this was published in the 2002. And uh, there is a very good understood that Ordovician Silurian uh, mass extinction event was considered a climate change. The decrease of the ocean level stopped oceanic circulation, shut down the hydrological cycle, and then there is a climate change, and uh, probably that is because the reason why happening the Ordovician Silurian event. However, there are interesting scientists that uh, Bruce Liberman in the University of Kansas, he is saying that the GLB, the gamma ray burst, might be the cause of killing the trilobite, which, which is very common at the period, which is uh, uh, the arrived levy was in the surface of the ocean. And that was very tricky uh, uh, paper. Uh, of course, no, not everybody believes that, but this is very interesting because the the disaster, the GLB is actually, this is the GLB, it's uh, the, the big, uh, the, the massive, the gamma ray bus. Gamma ray bus is an unbelievable event because the luminosity is more than all luminosity of all existing galaxy. Because uh, the luminosity of the galaxy is uh, 10 power 36, however, the luminosity of the gamma ray bus is 10 power 44 watt, which is, Eight, uh, 10 to 8 power compared to the galaxy of the luminosity. This is an extreme event. And it happened very rare. However, it can be observed uh, like uh, 300 times per, or 30 times per year, and uh, which means a thousand times per year. But if it happened, of course, not only the civilization, they, they can cause the end of the Earth too. There is a wealth layer star in the uh, 7,500 light years from the Earth, and they, they are uh, concerned having a very big gamma ray burst. The gamma ray burst, even if it's happening 6,000 light years away, they might cause a mass extinction. If this happens 1,000 light years away, then uh, 100,000 megaton explosion. If it happens 100 light years, melt surface of the atmosphere and everything, and this is very, very shocking event. However, what I would like to emphasize is that the talk, uh, the gamma ray burst, in some sense, is similar to the solar uh, super flare. And the solar flare will be discussed by Isobe, Professor Isobe, after my talk. This is asteroid impact, and this is illustration I, I got from Wikipedia of the uh, Chikshrub event. And this is a Chikshrub uh, uh, crater uh, with a diameter of 170 kilometers. It's a huge uh, diameter, and probably that killed the old dinosaurs and 70% uh, of the living things. But the important thing is, according to the, the report submitted uh, by the Dr. Michel to the United States Cong Congress, that they are proving every 10 years or we are happening or every 10 to 15 years, or like 20, 30 years, there is a big impact equivalent to the Hiroshima bomb. So this is a location where the asteroid hit to the Earth, but we didn't recognize. But most of them are very small, but sometimes it's very big. And we, we have a guest from the JAXA, uh, Dr. Uh, Yoshikawa, who might comment on that. And there is an issue that MN4 asteroids that might be coming to the Earth on 2029 and April 13. And they come much closer to the Earth than the communication satellite. And there is a uh, discussion whether this Apophis, this is a, a human killing asteroid, might be coming to the Earth. However, now the probability is assumed to be much rarer than initially thought. 
However, that kind of issue is always happening because the most of the NEO near Earth objects could not be found because there are almost 30% of the uh, hundreds meter size of the NEO have been found, but less than 1% of the 130 meters NEO have been detected by NASA in 2013. So we have to increase the capacity to acceptance. I would like to introduce how big the disaster scale is. If you put the Hiroshima bomb as one, the Tunguska event, which is happened 100 years ago, was 1,000. And the nuclear winter is uh, 5.3, 10 to the fifth power. However, if you think about the Chikshu event that killed all the dinosaurs, this is the event of the 5.5 to 10 power, uh, 10 to the tenth power. So this is enormous scale, the impact the asteroid attack is. So these are the discussions that we like to make. But the interesting thing is I made a very rough uh, comparative study. So if you say that DRV, that may happen every one billion years, so 10 to the ninth power. And the future threat, we don't know, because when we, no one knows when the, this happens. Super volcano, killing locally by lava and ash, globally by gas, and 10 to the sixth power, it's a big eruption like Toba, or 10 to 4 to 6 power. The last one is the Toba. It's 74,000 years ago. The next one might be the Yellowstone, but in Japan, the Aso and Kikai might be issued. Asteroid, the big one, was 65 million years ago. However, the locally, we have Tunguska, and also we have in, in the Russian, in the, I think, just three to four years ago, right? And Superfair, and that will be discussed in the Soviet session. However, that will kill the modern civilization, and the, the last one is a bigger one, is 1859, but probably the bigger one might be happened in the past, that he will discuss. And global warming is a different thing, because it might be happening 10 to fifth power or 10 to fifth power in naturally. However, we are accelerating that frequency, and then we, uh, and also the important thing is it's ongoing. The outbreak of in, in infectious disease, it might be 10 to the first to third power because every 10 years, every 100 years, big one is happening. And uh, 2014, we have an Ebola outbreak in Africa. And probably Professor Misyama will be discussing this more uh, clearly. And we have terrorism issue. We didn't think about that, but it was happened last year in Paris, right? So these uh, different type of the, uh, the issue. And then we have earthquake. This will be 10 to the first power. Every 10 years, the uh, big one is happening. Actually, we, in Japan, we have more happening. And probably we have to, we have to think about the next Kanto big uh, earthquake and probably the Nankai, and it might be happening every time. Tsunami, the big one, is uh, 100 years or 1,000 years. However, we didn't think about occurrence of Tohoku, right? And fruit, flood, actually it's happening every year, right? <laughs> every year or every month. <laughs> So because probably it's connected to the global warming and probably the climate change. And then the finally I put the AI singularity that was discussed, it's a modern civilization. It, we don't know it's happened before, but it might be happening in 20 years. However, someone say it was already happening, the singularity, depending upon how you count them, right? So, if you list all the different types of the disaster and the frequency and the impact, you have to think about different directions, different discussion. Uh, this is just what we are doing, we are developing. This is a, uh, Dr. Hosono who made a calculation scheme for the impact. And also I am, this is uh, just introduction of the calculation. And I'm also doing the database of the exoplanet and then we want to introduce the asteroid component. And I will skip this. And uh, Earth disaster, and we have to think about Earth disaster flood and volcanic event. 
I will stick. This is a uh, actually disaster happened in Brazil, and it killed almost 1,000 people. It was 2011, but the same year we have uh, East Japan earthquake. And this is just the introduction of the Fukushima, uh, the, the radioactive measurement that we have done with the publication of how, what, what I involved. This is uh, some report what I, I, I published, and if you are thinking, uh, please come to the journal. But this is a, a disaster. It seems that it's happened in the same region, but what the, the over two was happening in Brazil, and the last two was happening in Japan. This is Nagano, and this is Hiroshima. Uh, I am developing the prediction uh, frame to, to pr predict uh, the occurrence of the debris flow. This is a numerical tool. And uh, this is the real occurrence of the debris flow place. And uh, we, we would like to establish the, to increase the predictability of that kind of disaster. So this was all my concerning. But uh, tomorrow, we will discuss the preparedness for the present disaster, uh, mainly focusing on the financial me mechanism and discussing the present session and the risk hedge derivative by inviting and uh, chaired by uh, Professor Kanamura. Uh, Professor Stefan uh, Truek is okay, Truek, and he will uh, talking how to enhance resilience and, and timing of the investment for the adaptation of the climate impact in hazard. And also Professor Ohashi will be discussing mainly CAT index future to be created. And also the past session uh, uh, sorry, uh, the past session, as I told you, that uh, Professor Misiyama and Professor Ogata uh, 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 will be, uh, sorry, Ko Konuma? Uh, Professor Koyama, sorry, I'm sorry, Ko Koyama sensei. Uh, Koyama and uh, Professor Misiyama will talk about the uh, lesson from the past, right? Uh, and this is an uh, introduction of the fall session and uh, uh, and also the, uh, the issue to be raised. Thank you very much. <laughs>